today about plaster and plaster repair. We are in Pearl, Natchez, Mississippi, working on the front room and we're doing some plaster repair. And uh, that's a question that we get a lot. Uh, when I walk into an older home, I see plaster and I see cracks and I see issues. And I think either A, I'm gonna have to take all the plaster out of the house or B, there's a problem with the foundation. And neither of those may be true. We wanna walk you through how to address some of these issues. These homes are very old. The earth moves, they're on a crawl space foundation. They're gonna sway a little bit, but sometimes you're gonna have some cracks. You're gonna vary anything from something like this, which is very insignificant, this is cosmetic. It can be taken care of very easily with a couple of products, and we'll show you those later, to large issues where there's been water intrusion, water and plaster do not mix. So when there is an issue with water, you're gonna to have to remove at least that spot but you can also fix that. We're gonna show you how to do that. One of the first things we see with a lot of new rehabilitators, people have just come into restoration, is the immediate knee-jerk reaction to bust out all their plaster. Like Kevin said, you come in, you see the cracks, you see the issues, and you immediately think, oh, I've gotta get rid of my plaster. Or B, two, we see, same thing, new people coming into an old house for the first time, they've never had it plaster before, so they think, well, I've got to put insulation in my wall, so I've got to take this plaster out and insulate. What's my other option? Well, the other option is that you already have insulation on your wall. So I wanted to talk to you a little bit today about what plaster is and why it is the best possible substance to have on your walls in your home, and you should preserve it at all costs. Plaster, limestone plaster, is exactly what it sounds like it is. It is pulverized, limestone. Limestone is taken, it is crushed, it, it's heated to a super high temperature, then it's crushed, water is added to it, and then it's sealed in an airtight container. When you put that back on your wall, when we fill these cracks and put it back on the wall, it's going to react with the oxygen in the room and it's gonna become, it's gonna reconstitute itself as limestone again on our wall. Well, what does limestone do? One thing it does is it draws carbon dioxide out of the air, so it's purifying your air for you all the time. It also, in the super humid months here in the south and even sometimes up in the north, it pulls humidity out of the air and holds on to it. Then what happens in the winter when the air gets super dry and our sinuses start to dry out? It releases that humidity back into the air. So it's amazing for humidity control and temperature control. If you touch a plaster wall, it's cool to the touch, so it's always working with the environment. It's cleaning your air, it's keeping your air at the right humidity level, and it is an incredible insulator. Again, remember, you basically, when you have limestone plaster walls, you have stone walls. What better insulation could you have? Old homes are meant to breathe. They were made in a way that they need to breathe. So we coming in and making them airtight, like we build our new modern homes, is the fastest, surest way to make your old home rot from the inside out. We'll talk about that in a future video, but this is just to say limestone plaster does incredible things in your home for you. It's working 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year, and you're not having to do anything but enjoy the benefits of it. We're gonna address these plaster issues and see what we're looking at. So the first thing we want to do, you see the crack here, we see some crumbling down here, it looks pretty bad. We're going to push and see if we've got any uh, release from the lath. So if your keys are broken or if you've just gotten some distance between your lath and your plaster, it's gonna push a little bit and you, get, you see some down here. I don't know if you see that on the camera or not. Uh, you get some cracks up here. Those are gonna be fine, those are gonna be cosmetic. But these we're gonna need to address. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to drill about an inch and a half on both sides of these and we're gonna put glue in after we drill these holes. So I'm using about a quarter inch bit. And do it on both sides. Oh, did I miss it? Yep, missed it. <laughs> That's okay, just put another one. Up here where the lab is. Okay, after we've got our holes drilled, what basically we're, we're doing is getting access to the lab so that we can get in there and 
put in some glue to get it adhesed. Is that a word, adhesed? <laughs> Who knows? All right, first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna show the product. I'm going to use this product, which basically goes in and preps the hole for putting in our glue, which is gonna hold it to the lab. So I'm gonna shoot this product directly into the hole. It's prepping for the glue, but it's also helps to eliminate just dust, which keeps everything from sticking. And you spray it directly in there. And then clean your surface. And now, we don't have to wait for that to dry or anything. We go put our glue into these holes. And what you wanna do is, this is not like normal adhesives or many other things. It comes out really quick, it's a lot thinner. So you'll get used to it a little bit. But you want to put it in and you want it to go back to the lab. So put it in there generously. If it starts coming out of the hole, you've basically filled it. But what you want it to do is go behind what you see here and get a lot of surface. It's gonna fall off the ladder. Again, clean your surface. I could put some in, this is where I missed the lab right here. I could put some in there. It's gonna go behind, between. It's not gonna hurt you a bit to put some in there. Now, uh, in some instances, when you do have some serious areas like this, you're gonna to need to anchor those. And so, got these anchors here and you'll put that in and you basically anchor it flush until the glue gets nice and dry and then you pull these out and you, you do your second steps. And you're gonna go straight in the hole you put the glue in. The really the, the hole is more of an access point. You don't have to think of it as end all. See that pull back? Flush. That's where we want it to be. It's going to give you a smooth surface. I meant to mention when you're drilling your holes to put your glue in, you don't want to go through the lab. You just want to go up to the lab. And you'll feel the play, basically. When you get through your plaster, you'll feel a little punch, and that's when you hit your, uh, your lab. But when you put these in, obviously, you're going to go through your lab, pull them to the, draw, to the plaster, and get your glue to adhere. All right, so we've got it all tight there. We've got our glue back there. It's gonna do its job. And then we're gonna pull these out and then we're gonna do the finish. beautiful house for some reason every transom window is painted over every single one and I love transom windows this one was painted over and then wallpapered over so earlier today I took the wallpaper down just like I could get the wallpaper down in the rest of this room that's why I look like this at this point but then underneath it was paint so what I did is I took a coat of smart strip my favorite stripper on the market because it's non-caustic, it's water-based, it's water-soluble, it's fantastic. Put a little quick coat over the top of the paint, slap some saran wrap on it, I've let it sit while I'm working, um, taking down the wallpaper, and I'm gonna take off the saran wrap, and this paint should just 
peel right off with my razor blade. I tried to get it off before I put the smart strip on and it was killing me. I was having to work and work and work and work. And I thought, work smarter, not harder. So let's see what happens with the smart strip. Oh, would you look at that? Why looky there, it's coming right off with the saran wrap. That's what we like to see. Um, we did test this, this is not lead paint. This is just latex paint, so nobody panic. I don't think anybody in the days of lead paint would have painted over the transoms since they were for airflow. Look at that. And no, I'm not wearing gloves because this product is actually skin safe. Now, when I tell you to wear gloves, yeah. It's probably just been setting an hour. If I'd let it set overnight, this probably would have fallen off with the saran wrap entirely. It's pretty satisfying. Half one down, like 12 more to go. <laughs> Three, one, two. Hey! Evil. <laughs> All right. I'll just cut that off. <laughs> Found treasure. Let's see. But it's under the house treasure, under which means house, maybe, maybe it also means maybe I'm gonna grab it, maybe I'm gonna make you grab it. <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> Look at that. That is one of the missing fireplace summer covers. Yay! Get this sucker out of the weather. Clean it up. Good lord, but give me a heart attack. <laughs> this is what a hard day of working in the house will get you. Tired doggos. Exhausted. Hear the breathing? So tired. All right, mister, you ready to go to work? Ready to go to work? You ready to go? Let's go. Let's do it. Alrighty. There, there we go. go. There we go. <laughs> What you doing, Kevin? I'm going to remove the ropes. I can't. Ta -da! That way it still works. Whoa! Now to get the top sash out, I've got to take out this parting bead so that I can pull it out. And it is in there a little bit more. Gotta be careful and take this out as well. You know how it's always like really exciting when your dress has pockets? <laughs> My window has a pocket. <laughs> I'm just kidding. This is your weight pocket. So this is where you access pockets right in here. You're going to have a screw or a nail down here. You're going to take that out and you're going to be able to access your ropes and weights. This window has only lost one of its ropes and weights right here. This one goes to the top pulley. And so we'll restring those, get those hung again. I'll have functioning windows. <laughs> <gasps> I'm on the outside. You're on the inside. Where'd the window go? Window is currently laying in the front yard. Okay. All right. That probably happens a lot. <laughs> I'm painting a white ceiling white. Yeah, is it so easy? It's so hard to see what is painted and what is not. But we're putting another coat on there. 
It'll be crisp and clean. Nice and fresh. Nice and fresh. <laughs> repair don't replace your historic windows we've talked about it before amazingly enough on the interior of these windows we didn't have lead paint we think it's because they'd only been painted one time sometime in the 80s so we've just got the latex paint and then the original finish underneath so started out by removing the windows from their interior sash got all the original glass out safely I'm now stripping all that latex paint off I'll be doing some gluing repairs, some Abertron wood epoxy repairs, then I'll prime them, give them a good prime coat. I'll go ahead and paint my interior. Can't paint my exterior yet, that's gotta wait a few weeks. I'll paint my interior sash, rail style and mutton. Then I'll bed my glass, glaze my glass, put my little points in, and we'll have to let that sit for about two weeks before we can come back and do our exterior coat of paint. So I'm one sash in on an entire house worth of windows, but It'll be worth it in the end. Pearl sits on the prettiest street in Natchez and gets the prettiest sunsets of any you've ever seen. Look at the color she turns. our sash cord, all of our windows, even though we had three of them still working, we wanted to get the new rope in there so it'll last longer. We left our sash pulleys in, so I just weaved this down. Now one thing I did do was I cut this about eight inches longer than I needed it so that I could have room to tie my knot on the weight below and then I'll trim it off. All you've got to do is tie your knot, thread it through your sash roller, You'll get it down under your weight pocket down there and uh, we'll tie it off and I'll show you that knot there because we need a specific knot for this weight. So we want to tie a specific knot on this weight because if you just tie a knot, it could be on one side, which would hold the weight a little bit crooked and it would basically scrape up and down. We want this weight to hang vertically in the pocket so that you don't have that sound every time you raise and lower your window. So I'm gonna show you the knot. After you run your sash cord through your weight, you create a little rabbit hole. The rabbit goes over the weight, through the hole, around the tree, and back through the hole to give you a knot that looks like this. YouTube, me too, everybody That's too. Let's see how you know you did it right. Let's see. What the what? One. Yeah. Bam. 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 But, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh,
So it's been a super long day of restoration. I'm really tired, feeling a little bit discouraged. So I've come to my favorite place on the planet <laughs> to commune with the spirits. Literally, we're in the Natchez City Cemetery and it is a historic and exquisite cemetery, but I'm at my favorite grave site. This is little Florence Irene Ford. Florence died when she was 10, um, which, you know, childhood mortality rates were very high at the turn of the century. She died in 1871 at 10 years old. But this grave is very interesting. Florence was terrified of storms, absolutely terrified of storms. And her mother couldn't bear the thought of burying her and then there being storms and she couldn't sit with, with Florence and comfort her. So they had the grave made where on stormy nights, there was a door that could be opened, a stairway down into it. And there was a glass panel that separated Florence's mother from little Florence inside the grave. And her mother would come and sit with her on stormy nights. The glass panel has since been uh, concreted over, but you can still see the stairs and the opening where her mother would come and sit with her to comfort her on stormy nights after she passed away. So it just shows that the love of mother and child doesn't stop with death. And also is a good reminder that um, pesky neighbors are not the worst thing that happens in life. <laughs> Bad plaster is not life's biggest woe. All right. Okay. You ready? Moment of truth. Moment of said, truth. Let there be light. Light. And there was light. Yay! That way it makes me feel like we actually accomplished a whole something. Yeah. Put a whole light fixture in. It shows the lag and we lost so well. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> it's a steamboat light, meanie. Yeah. What you doing, Kevin? What crazy thing do I have you doing now? Hey, Lane. Um, well, you already had a great wallpaper picked out that matches the green and the beautiful uh, light that we've got in here and the blue and the beautiful tile that we've got on this fireplace. And uh, then you pulled this up and uncovered this original wallpaper, which is gorgeous. Of course, we couldn't save it. So I'm taking photos of it with my graphic art skills. I'm gonna take it into Photoshop and create this pattern, clean it all up, and see if we can't get it printed and put it back in here. Lane. Yes? Why aren't you working? Well, I brought my teddy bear to work with me today. Yeah, uh-huh. And sometimes the teddy bear says that it needs to be snuggled. So yeah. you gotta take a teddy bear snuggling break. Okay. Yeah, let's bring your teddy bear to work day. <laughs> Somebody thinks he needs to be on TV. He wants to take credit for all the work we did this week. So this is our week in review. We started in the front parlor. First thing we did was take down all of the wallpaper, which revealed all of the plaster issues that we knew we were gonna have. Uh, we started working with repairing the cosmetic stuff, and we actually didn't have the product that we need to fill in the larger areas, so we'll do that when we come back. We took out this window, landed this beautiful window repair and painting that it looked great. We've got three more to do though. So we did go ahead and take those out and Lane's gonna work on those back in our home state. So that's kind of nice that she can work on Pearl when we're in Conway. We put up a new light fixture. The famous steamboat light fixture. What else did we do? Oh, behind you. Can you walk over to this side? because there are things over here. You guys know, for some crazy reason, they painted over and wallpapered over this uh, transit. Painted both sides. So Lane took all of that off and it looked nice now. Uh, we are eliminating this door, which goes to the bedroom. There's one other door that comes in through the entryway and there was no need for this. So I took this down, walled it up, and drywalled it. So when we get our other plaster product, we will plaster that in and make it look smooth. Uh, I think that's it. Lane, did we do anything else other than deal with plumbers and, oh, yes, paint the ceiling. Flawlessly, as usual. How many times does it take you to paint the ceiling, Kevin? Well, it needed two coats, I think. Okay. So first coat, I just kind of roughed in. <laughs> <laughs> The second coat I did the way Lane told me, so it was good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 
some people take souvenirs home from their trips. I take windows to restore and cushions to recover. <laughs>